Uh, good morning, ladies and gentlemen, and we're, welcome to Hoosick Valley Community Church, our online streaming for our worship service this March 22nd, Sunday morning at 1030. Glad to have you with us this morning. A few uh, prayer requests or thoughts out to uh, share with you this morning as we want to continue to pray for our country and pray for the people around the world as well as we get through uh, this pandemic and see what's going on and just seek God's guidance, God's direction. Pray for our leaders for godly wisdom, not just the wisdom of the world, but for godly wisdom to guide them, to direct them. And pray for one another. If you have neighbors, friends, elderly that you know of, check in on them, give them a phone call, make sure they're doing okay, see if they need anything, and make sure those around us are, are doing well. We may not be able to gather together as a church body, but we are the church out in the world. The building that we have here to worship in is just that. It's just a place to gather. We are the church. We go forth. We minister uh, to those out in the world around us. And we would ask you, if you're viewing this morning, just to leave us a message on Facebook. Let us know that you're there. Uh, Let us know how we can make things better as we go forth uh, each and every Sunday from here until whenever we can gather together as a group. Let us know you're here. Uh, Send in any prayer requests that you may have, and we'll be sure to pray for you and to continue to lift you up each and every day before the Lord. And if you have any needs, feel free to call us. We'd be glad to uh, try to help you out and minister to you as best as you can. This morning, since uh, we have been given some restrictions on who can gather and who can't gather and the things that are coming up, especially tonight here in New York with a 100% shutdown around us, you're stuck with me. And uh, you're going to get stuck with me singing a song as well. So at this time, as we prepare for that, I'm going to sing a song that uh, hopefully you'll like and you'll enjoy. And if not, well, just hopefully the message is better than my song. So we'll sing for you this morning. There's a lighthouse on the hillside that overlooks life's sea. When I'm tossed, it sends out a light that I might see. And the light that shines in darkness now Will safely lead us, Lord If it wasn't for the lighthouse This ship would be no more And I thank God for the lighthouse I owe my life to Him for Jesus is the lighthouse and from the rocks of sin He has shown His light around me that I might clearly see if it wasn't for the lighthouse where would this ship be everybody that lives around us They say, tear that old lighthouse down. The big ships, they don't sail this way anymore. There's no use of it standing around. But then my mind goes back to that stormy night when just in time I saw the light, yes, the light from that old lighthouse that stands up there 
on the hill and I thank God for the lighthouse I owe my life to him for Jesus is the lighthouse and from the rocks of sin he has shown his light around me that I might clearly see if it wasn't for that lighthouse where would this ship I thank God for the lighthouse I owe my life to Him If it wasn't for the lighthouse Where would this ship be? thankful for the lighthouse today. Remember that time when God came into your heart and into your life and you finally made that decision to say yes to him, the hope and the joy and the peace that comes from knowing him. This morning, if you have your Bibles, go with me to Psalm 91. As we look into Psalm 91, we see a passage that's coming off of Psalm 90 and Moses is sharing some things and he's sharing some promises that God has. The things that we find here in Psalm 91 are to give us some comfort, give us some joy, and give us some peace, especially in the times that we're going in right now. I want us to take a moment. We're going to read the Psalm 91, then we'll have a word of prayer, and then we'll expound on the verses that we, uh, we have read this morning. Psalm 91, beginning in verse 1. He who dwells in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, He is my refuge and my fortress. My God, in Him I will trust. Surely He shall deliver you from the snare of the fowler and from the perilous pestilence. He shall cover you with His feathers, and under His wings you shall take refuge. His truth shall be your shield and buckler. You shall not be afraid of the terror by night, nor of the arrow that flies by day, nor of the pestilence that walks in darkness, nor of the destruction that lays waste at noonday. A thousand may fall at your side and ten thousand at your right hand, but it shall not come near you. Only with your eyes shall you look and see the reward of the wicked. Because you have made the Lord who is my refuge, even the most high, your dwelling place. No evil shall befall you, nor shall any plague come upon you or near your dwelling. For he shall give his angels charge over you to keep you in all your ways. In their hands they shall bear you up, lest you dash your foot against a stone. You shall tread upon the lion and the cobra. The young lion and the serpent you shall trample underfoot. Because he has set his love upon me, therefore I will deliver him. I will set him on high because he has known my name. He shall call upon me and I will answer him. I will be with him in trouble. I will deliver him and honor him. With long life I will satisfy him and show him my salvation. Let's pray. Father, this morning as we come before you, we ask that you guide us and that you direct us in the path that you want us to go. We pray for each and every one who is suffering from the trials and tribulations of this moment and this time that we're in. We pray for those on the front lines, those who are uh, the doctors, the, the nurses, those who are the EMTs and who are there taking care of the sick. We ask for a special protection upon each and every one of them. We do ask for prayer for our whole country as, Father, you have allowed this to come into our lives and to be a part of our, of our society at this moment and this time. Maybe if nothing else but to make us slow down and just remember who we are and how frail we truly are. 
We pray for the people around the world that are suffering from this, those who have lost loved ones already, and those who are on the brink of losing loved ones, whether it's from this virus or whether it's from whatever situation, it's always a tough time when our loved ones are taken from us. We pray for our leaders. We pray for godly wisdom. We pray that they seek you. We pray that they do the things you've called them to do for our nation and for our world. We pray for one another. Help us to reach out to our neighbors, our friends, those in need, those that we need to be aware of as the church as we go forth, being your hands and your feet, your eyes, your ears, and your mouth. We pray that you guide us and direct us this day. Help us to understand the hope and the joy and the peace that truly comes from you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. In Psalm 91, this psalm was written to comfort the church in the wilderness. As Moses was guiding the children of Israel through the wilderness, the 40 years that they spent in the wilderness, that should have only taken them at the most 11 days from point A to point B. They spent 40 years in the wilderness because of their disobedience, their faithlessness. They would have faith, and then something would happen that they'd lose their faith, and they'd walk away from God until a tragedy happened. Then they would come back to him once again. Trust him and follow him until they got it all together again and then lost their faith again. Not so much unlike us in the world we live in today. Not so much like, unlike us in the trials and situations around us. When things are going well, we don't really think a whole lot about God, do we? But when trials and tribulations come, our focus becomes more upon him. And many times we blame him for the things around us. But here, as they went through this 40-year curse, the children of Israel in the wilderness, this was written to assure the children of God of all ages of God's providence, of his guidance, of his direction, and of their earthly pilgrimage. Look what he says again. As we go back to Psalm 91, look at verse 1. He says, He who dwells in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. What a relief that is to turn to this psalm and move out of the shadows, if, if you will, of, of Psalm 90 into the sunshine of, of Psalm 91. These promises that we read are, are for you and for me, are for us to apply to our lives, to understand that he dwells in the secret place. He, he, he shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. Where do you abide today? Where is your secret place? What is it that's important to you? What is it that you truly appreciate even more today than you did a month ago? Maybe the freedom to be able to come and go, we still have freedom. We just have to correct that freedom and corral it a little bit. Sometimes we can get too much freedom. Sometimes we can go forth too much and, and, and expect more than what maybe we really truly deserve. But when we read this passage, and he says, hey, he who dwells in the secret place of the Most High, are you dwelling there? Are you dwelling? What does it mean to dwell? Well, we're, we're going to look at that a little bit later, what it means to dwell. But are you dwelling in the secret place? Are you abiding under the shadow of the Almighty? Look at verse 2. We see in verse 2 this theme is security. He says, I will say of the Lord, he is my refuge. He is my fortress. My God, in Him I will trust. How often is He your fortress? How often is He your refuge? How often do you trust in Him? Only when trials and tribulations come? Do you trust in Him when all things are going well and, and everything is good? Or are you trusting in yourself? God preserves those who abide in Him. He preserves those who, who love Him. And that doesn't mean life is going to be perfect. It doesn't mean life is going to be without trial and tribulation. He promises trial and tribulation in this world. But he also has promises hope and joy and peace to get through those trials, to get through those tribulations, to get through those hard times that may come our way. These promises are not for the people who run to the Lord only in times of danger, but for those who dwell in his presence. There's that word again, right, that we find in verse 1 dwelling in the presence of God. When we dwell with somebody, we spend time with them. When we dwell with somebody, we, we, we put, pitch a tent, if you will, and spend a quality amount of time dwelling with that individual. 
God needs us to pitch a tent with Him. He needs us to dwell with Him. He needs us to spend a little more time than, than what we've been spending. Giving Him five minutes because our days are rushed. Giving Him this moment of time because we, we got too much going on. Well, here we are now. There's no sports going on around us. Can't gather together on a Sunday morning for worship. We don't have to travel back and forth. Can't go to work. What are you doing now? How are you spending your time dwelling with God? Now, what excuses do we come up with now that we don't have time to read his word? We don't have time to dwell with the one who gives us hope, who gives us joy, who gives us peace. Look at verses 3 through verse 6. We see some dangers that we face. He throws these down. He says, surely he shall deliver you from the snare of the fowler, from the perilous pestilence. He shall cover you with his feathers. He's not telling us we're not going to go through these, but he says he shall deliver us from these. He shall get us through these things. He's talking about snares and pestilence in verse 3. He's talking about arrows in verse 5. He talks about plagues down in verse 10, stones in verse 11 and 12, lions and snakes down in verse 13. And that snake could possibly be Satan himself that he's referring to here. God will deliver us. He will guide us. He says there's dangers out there that we need to be aware of. There's dangers out there that we must understand. But when we put our trust and our faith in Jesus Christ, he guides us. He directs us. He helps us through. Look what else he says. He shall cover you, verse 4, he shall cover you with his feathers. See that picture of the hen covering its chicks when the storm comes in? He shall cover you with his feathers. And under his wings you shall take refuge. His truth shall be your shield and your buckler. You shall not be afraid of the terror by night, nor the arrow that flies by day, nor of the pestilence that walks in darkness, nor the destruction that lays waste at noonday. You see, these are the things that you need to be aware of. God is there. He will guide us. He will direct us through this thing. But just as the children of Israel had to go through the wilderness to get to the promised land, sometimes you and I in our daily walks and our daily lives need to go through some wilderness to get to the promised land that God has for us. Sometimes we need to see the wilderness to understand that maybe we have been in the promised land and not known it. Had some promises that God has given us, some hopes, some joys, and some peace. So there's some dangers Amongst the security that God gives us, covering us with his wings, making that refuge for us. Jump down, if you will, verses 14 through verse 16, we see this abiding life that he has for us. Verse 14, he says, because he has set his love upon me, therefore I will deliver him. I will set him on high because he has known my name. Right there, let's stop, go back, because he has set his love upon me. Is your love upon God? What is more important to you than God? My family is important to me. My friends are important to me. My work is important to me. But none of that is more important to me than God. Because without God, I can't be the husband that I need to be, the right husband. Without God, I can't be the correct father that I need to be. Without God, I can't be the correct friend that I need to be or the pastor that I need to be. See, God helps me become better in all these things. God helps me to be what I need to be for him. And when I always, as you, our church has always heard me say, when I have this relationship with God right, then this relationship with others is going to be what it needs to be. Doesn't necessarily mean that others are going to like me, but if I'm treating people the way God wants me to, it's going to work out. God's going to guide. God's going to direct. Not always my way, but his way. So as he says in verse 14, because he has set me, he has set his love upon me. Is your love set upon God? Therefore, I will deliver him. I will set him on high because he has known my name. You want to be delivered today? We need to turn to God. We need to seek him. He will give us that peace. He will give us that joy. He will give us that hope that we need to have. It's a passage in John 14, verse 27, where Jesus says, Peace I leave with you, my peace I give to you, not as the world gives, give I unto you. Let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. The peace of the world is messed up. 
The peace of the world is not the peace that God gives. God gives us a sublime peace, a peace that passes all understanding, an inner peace that when it's there, you know you got it. And when it's gone, you know you missed it. It's gone. Oh, can we get it back? Yes, we can. But we've turned away from God. But we need to turn back to Him. Let's see what else he says. Uh, Verse 15, he says, He shall call upon me, and I will answer him. I will be with him in trouble. I will deliver him and honor him. The world that we live in today with cell phones, somebody calls you, you can see who it is calling, and you have a choice. You have a choice either to answer the phone or ignore that phone, right? Well, when we call upon God, he doesn't ignore us. He hears us. He listens to us. But when we call upon him, we need to be asking him for things that really matter, not just trivial stuff. Now, what might matter to you and might matter to me might be different in in what we see as trivial. But here's what he wants us to do. He wants us to call upon him. He says, cast all your care upon me. I care for you. So he wants us to care for him. He wants us to call upon him. He wants us to reach out to him. And that's what he's saying. He shall call upon me and I will answer him. Are you calling upon God? Are you seeking him for guidance and direction? Whether it's family matters, whether it's financial matters, whether it's work, whatever it might be, this whole sickness that's going on around us, call upon him. Call upon him. He will answer, but here's the thing. You can't call upon him expecting a certain answer. Call upon him expecting him to answer you as he sees fit. His ways, not ours. It's that understanding that he has, it's that peace that he has that we don't understand, that we don't always have. But when we trust God, he will guide us. He will direct us. And look what he says, I will be with him in trouble. I will deliver him and honor him. Don't you like having somebody with you when you're in trouble? These next few days or weeks or months, however long it's going to take to corral this coronavirus, Over the next few times that we don't gather together and you can't be with family and friends, I guarantee you the first day they say you can do that, boom, we're getting together, aren't we? We're meeting with family, we're meeting with friends, we're we're giving those hugs and and those loves loves on them like we haven't done in a while. Why? Because when something's taken away from us, we realize what it is that we've lost. When our faith is gone. Nobody can take that away from you, but you can set it aside. But when our faith is not there, when when it's gone, we miss it. But in moments like this, when God has called us back to honor him, to respect him, he's saying the same thing. Listen, I will be with you. I will honor you. I will deliver you. God wants to honor you. God wants to deliver you. Here's the question. Are we just running to him now because of trial and tribulation that's around us? Or is there something in our heart that says, you know what? I'm going to run to him, yes, but I'm going to stay with him. I'm going to dwell with him. I'm going to take up refuge with him. Those are the words that we find here in Psalm 91. Dwelling with God, taking up refuge with God, being what God wants us to be. This is the abiding life that he's given us. Produces the assurance of life. The life without fear the life that leads to the abounding life that he talks about in verses 14 through verse 16, the life of victory and the life of peace, these things that we find in the Word of God. The safest place in the world, the safest place in the world is under the shadow of the Almighty. Are you there? I grew up in Texas as a child in Oklahoma and Kansas, spent some time there as well. Summertime, it gets very hot. The sun is beating down. There's not a lot of trees in Texas where I grew up. So the sun was always there. So you would look somehow someplace to find some shade in the summertime. Because you'd go in the shade and it was cool. It may be hot compared to other places. But compared to being out in the middle of that sun, you find the shade. It's a cooling place. It's a place of comfort. It's a place where you just want to sit and dwell and take refuge for a period of time. Catch your breath, get a drink of water. And then after we did that as children, we'd go back out, we'd play again in the sun, and then, yes, we'd get hot again and back into the shade, back into that place of refuge to find peace and comfort. God is 
that peace and that comfort for us. He is that shade. He is that shadow. And that's what he tells us. He wants us to come to him under the shadow of the Almighty. The problem is, once we get rested up, we go back out into the sun, don't we? We go back out into the heat. We go back out into the battle. And we get worn out again. And sometimes we forget about getting the shade because the shade begins to narrow away from us as the sun changes its position. We lose it. This morning, maybe you have lost the shadow of God. He's there. He's always around. He says, I will never leave you nor forsake you. But we can walk away from him. And what he wants us to do is to trust him, to follow his guidance, to follow his direction. To possess a place to live therein. In that secret place, that covering, that hiding place under the shadow of the Almighty. Four things. Four things God is to those in the secret place. This is what I see here in this passage. In, in verse 2, he's a refuge or hiding place. He's a fortress or place of protection. He's God, a true and faithful God. He's a trust, a place of security. So when we look at those things that he shares, these, these promises or these uh, blessings that we can find that God is for us, it's understanding the hope that he has for us, being, being a refuge for us, a place of security, if you will, a, a hiding place, that fortress. True God. Well, we have a lot of gods in this world. We don't want to, like to mention it, but our gods can be our family. Our God, gods can be our jobs. Our gods can be our houses. There's a lot of things that can become more important to us. What a true God is is something that's more important to us than anything else. And God wants to be in that place, the creator of the universe, our everlasting Father, wants to be in that place in our life. And when He is truly in that place, when we are dwelling with the Almighty, under the shadow of the Almighty, then we can begin to understand some of these blessings and protections that He has for us. I also see five things that God will do for those dwelling in the secret place of the Most High. He says He will deliver us from the snare of the fowler. You look at this passage again. He'll deliver us from the trial and the tribulation, the snare of the fowler. He'll deliver us from the noise and pestilence of things coming around. Well, it doesn't mean they won't be there. But He does say He will deliver us out of them. He'll cover us with His feathers. We talked about that as the as the hen covers her chicks during the storm, God will cover us with his feathers. That's the picture that we get there. He will protect us under his wings. He, will wa he wants to take care of us. He wants to provide for us. And he says he'll make truth a shield and a buckler, a protector for us in the midst of the battle. In Ephesians, we have the portion of putting on the whole armor of God. Sometimes we we go out into the world as Christians not totally dressed the way that we should be for God. We don't put on the whole armor of God. But he says, hey, I'll be your shield, I'll be your buckler, I'll be there protecting you as you go into the battle, whatever is there. And, and there will be battles. This is just another blip in the world of battles around us today. There'll be more. There'll be other things that come our way. But God says, hey, I'll do these things for you. If you dwell with me, if you dwell in the secret place of the Most High. Dwelling does not mean just coming ever now and then. It means spending some quality time with God. And then lastly this morning, there's a sixfold result of abiding in the secret place. A sixfold result of abiding in the secret place. He says, you'll not be afraid of nighttime terrors. That means trials and tribulations that come at night, hardships of, of battles happening at night. He said, not to be afraid of the day arrows. That's the battles that come during the day, the hardships that we may face. So whether it's at night or whether it's at day, those battles are there. We, we know what happens many times at night. The thief likes to go on at night many times. Why? Because under the darkness, they break in. But there are those battles that happen during the day. He says for us not to be afraid of the pestilence. When you're abiding with me, don't be afraid of the pestilence. 
verse 6. He says, do not be afraid of the noonday destructions. Though a thousand fall at your left hand and ten thousand at your right hand, the destroyer does not come near you. God is a faithful God. God is a true God. He wants to protect you. He wants to provide for you. He wants the best for you. And then in verse 8, he says, you see the wicked rewarded. We all will get our reward someday for all the things that we've done. But when I read that passage in verse 8, he says, you will see the wicked rewarded. Makes me think of Asaph's psalm in Psalm 73. Where he says, you know, I, I looked around the world and I saw how the wicked seem to be prospering. And here I am, God, trying to do everything I can for you. Here I am, God, trying, trying my best to live for you. And all I see is the wicked prospering. And I'm struggling. I'm having a hard time. I'm having a hard time dealing with the things that I see going on around the world. But then he says, I entered into the sanctuary of God. And when I entered into the sanctuary of God, then I understood their end. See, when we dwell in that dwelling place, when we dwell under the shadow of the Almighty, God has a protection for us. God has a place for us. In verse 28 of Psalm 73, he says this, But it is good for me to draw near to God. I have put my trust in the Lord my God that I may declare all your works. It is good for me to draw near to God. We have a moment and a time in our history where each and every one of us can draw near to God. Each and every one of us can trust Him a little more than we have. And maybe we have to. Maybe that's how we're going to get through this. Maybe there's a reason of bringing us to this point to get our eyes focused back on what's important. Maybe there's a time for us as a nation to stop battling with each other. Start point, stop pointing fingers at each other and just trust God. Trust God to see us through. Yes, take your precautions. Yes, do the things that we're being told to do. Because God has given us wisdom as well, has he not? But trust him to see us through this and know that he is in charge. Let's close with a word of prayer. Father, we do ask that you go before us. We do ask that we put our faith and our trust in you the way that we should. We ask, Father, that you help us daily to trust you more. Not just because we're going through the hard times. Not just because there's difficulties around us but trust you for who you truly are. We know that you have prepared a way for each and every one. We know that you have a life before us that if we choose to walk with you, choose to believe in you, choose to accept Christ as our Lord and Savior, that we'll have that peace, we'll have that joy and that hope that can only come from you. It doesn't mean we'll not have any troubles, doesn't mean we'll not have trials and tribulations, but we'll have peace through it all. Guide us, direct us as a nation, direct us as a people, and direct us as a church as we go forth, and we give you the praise in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you guys. We'll see you next week right back here. Good Lord willing. Take care.